can't like what's happening internally. So people can get frustrated; they're not getting results straight away. But often, what someone's done is that maybe they're 30 or 40 years old, they've been doing something for 20 or 30 years, and they want to reverse all those mistakes in like six months or 20 days or two years or whatever. It's not going to happen. You know, it didn't, it didn't take us a year to get there. It's going to take a year to get better. So the longer you've abused yourself. I mean, we deal with people who have never ever been fit in their whole life. They've never ran a 5k even. They've, they've, just, they've never even been fit. So that their heart is like the size of a fist, a little small, and their, their lungs are shriveled up and their, their leg muscles are very you know, weak. So it's going to take them a lot longer to get the same results as someone who's maybe you know, a star athlete in high school who was active in high school and maybe had 20 year break and then get back into it. So it depends on the person how long it's going to take, but it always gets good results. It's like the prison of war camp, no one was overweight there. But some people lost weight a little bit slower because they had more to lose. So what's happening inside, good things are happening. You know, arteries are getting unclogged, hormones are getting rebalanced, bones are getting better, things like that. So it's, um, I can't speak on this person's behalf because I don't live with them, but I live with plenty of people who, <laughs> they might be doing something, but they're not doing it elsewhere, you know, like they might be doing the plan 80% of the time versus, you know, all the time. So, like my friend one time, she's like, oh, Harley, I'm, I'm, I'm the fattest fruit in, the, in, in Australia. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I don't know. She goes, I'm doing it 100% just fruit and vegetables, honey and avocados. I'm just, I'm, I'm a wit's end, Harley. I'm just like, I don't know. And this is 2007 when I believe everything that people, people used to say. And I was like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. Maybe there's something wrong with you. And then uh, her son says, oh, mum, what about the chocolate and the, the burgers you eat? You know? <laughs> and she went red. And I was like, what? Goes, yeah, like, that, that's probably your problem, Mum. He's like an eight-year-old kid. And I was like, explain, please. And she's like, oh, that's, that's so rare, though. Like, uh, you know. But so she's 100% fruitarian eating chocolate and, and the fried veggie burgers and chips at Hungry Jack's. So that was like, so, and so it was also, and then, then when she finally did go 100% on the, on the program, she lost a shit ton of weight, you know. But she's always... Under eating and binging and under eating and binging, but she was so disgusted in those sort of habits, she never told anyone about it. So, I like, can spot who's doing something long term. You know? And then again, there's someone I knew who I met in 2005, and they said, I've been doing a 100 cent raw food diet for like five years, but they're pretty big still. I was like, yeah, they look like a fruitarian to me. But then they showed me a photo of themselves, and they're like 120 kilos. And then they're down to 80 kilos. I was like, ah, oh, yes, yes, not everyone changes overnight. So it depends on the person's history. Um, it depends on the person's history, but everyone gets benefits. But some people might be closer to their goals because they've been living a better lifestyle. Some people might be further away. It's like if I started cycling at 37 now, with no prior experience, I'd probably never be this fit. You know? But because I've cycled for so long, it's easy for me to get fit because I've been, got a big base. But if I wanted to do break dancing, it would take me 10 years to be a good break dancer. Yeah, at least, it takes at least 10 years to be really good at something. My friends who play piano or can sing or good dancers, you know, 10 years at least doing something to be really good. But people do something for a year or, you know, six months. <laughs> It's, good, it's a great start. I don't mean to laugh to be cheeky, but let's be realistic. I've been coming to Thailand for almost 10 years now. Next year will be 10 years every year. I'm still learning things. It takes time, but it happens. The consistency, people focus on speed too much. I want results now. Don't focus on speed, focus on consistency and direction. Consistency and direction is more important than speed. 100%. I was going to add something to that. Yesterday, you had you had answered somebody when they were they were asking why um, paleo eaters and meat eaters aren't fat, and they you know they, they look like they're in better shape than yeah. some of the people even eating raw tofu. Like you said, it, it's going to catch up to them. Well, veganism does the same thing. Yeah, bingo. Raw tofu. It's going to catch up to you. Eventually, you're going to get thin. Just that's, wait for it. That's a good one. Don't stress about it because the stress is only going to make you fatter. Because what was the heaviest you were in your life? Uh, Two hundred and like two hundred seventy pounds. Yeah, it's almost hundred pounds different to we are now around about. Yeah, 
Yeah, 50 kilos. <laughs> yeah, I lost a small child. 50 kilos. Or a medium child. For an Ethiopian runner. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> an Ethiopian runner on your back. 50 kilos. That's huge. Over how many years? Uh, I lost the majority of it in the first year and a half. Hmm. And then the last probably 10, things are sort of 10 right? 20 kilos. Yeah. After that. Yeah. It's a diminishing return thing. You, can't, you, you lose a lot at the beginning if you really stick strict, but you, it's going to slow down. Yeah. It's like fitness. When you start cycling, your fitness goes up, 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 and then it starts to plateau. Yeah. And to get the extra lot. For me to get 10 seconds faster on that mountain, just to get 10 seconds faster on that mountain, that takes like a huge effort. Yeah. Huge effort for me to get 10 seconds quicker over 33 minutes. But, 33 minutes? Yeah, to <laughs> yeah for, to the temple. But for most people, I've seen people sh shaving 20 minutes off their time this week. <laughs> 20 minutes. You know, 20 minutes is like me getting on a motorbike. So people get gains quick at the start on fitness or whatever, but then once they get close to the goal, it can be a bit harder. But I often people, people write me all the time, I'm doing it Harley, I'm doing it Harley, and they'll ask more questions and they're not doing it. Yeah. They might be doing it, but not long enough. But it's just no, you know. And it's mental. A lot of it's a lot of it, the weight gain and the retained weight is mental, man. You just yeah, because you start just you start to think, oh, it's not working. You go back to your old habits. Yeah. I'll eat a couple of avocados tonight or whatever. I'll go to eat some steak or whatever. You know, yeah. people. Yeah, people people make it hard for themselves. And I say the opposite end of the scale as well because. Not everyone's trying to lose weight. It's people like you know, like people like me, we're slim anyway, and so we want to gain weight. Yeah. And so that's actually quite a big challenge, as being like eating veg. Well, not vegetarian, but you know, just if you're being like a hardcore vegetarian or hardcore vegan, it's a challenge because the food is so small in calories half the time, like salads and you know, and you're stuffing yourself full of you know whatever bananas. I'm not really a Julian fan. You know, the fruit I don't really like the taste. But yeah. but you know, I'm having like so many banana shakes, which is cool. I like it. But there is a challenge. If I, if I become lazy for just four days, I've lost a, a nearly a kilogram and a half or something. Mm. You, know. so you, you need to be the housemate of these you're people. You're like fighting to eat yeah. all the time. You need to become the housemate of these people. Yeah. And, uh, and then... Yeah. <laughs> it causes a little conflict. <laughs> it's almost a gain weight that just comes down to like cutting back your cardio. You know, increase your calories. Do weights if you want to put a muscle, heavy yeah, weights. I just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, re, I quite relate a bit. I, um, I just did a juice, juice detox yeah. and I lost a bit of weight, which was great. And uh, my energy level was really up. But then what happened is I, I, I can't like not to eat too much, you know, for too, too long and then uh, overeat. At the same time, I know that I need to get some weight, but a good, good weight, like muscle, like mm -hmm. good fiber. So now I'm trying to eat every two hours. So what's, what, what's the best advice? How much are you bench pressing at the moment? Oh no, I can't do heavy weight right now. But you want to gain muscle? Yeah, but not heavy weight right now. You need to do heavy weights. Oh, okay. What's wrong with your joint? Start huh? small. What's wrong with your joints? Well, I played tennis for all my life, and they. Uh. <laughs> That's Don't hard. It's, it's hard to get big muscles if you've got shoulder problems. It's impossible almost. Right now I'm doing like just free body exercise, like just lifting my body. For that's good. But that won't give you big muscles like. I mean that's that maybe can do that for the next two years. And then maybe shoulders get better. But to be big you need to do heavy weights. Body weight doesn't do much at all. But it's, body weight can be a great um, starter and get the tendons a bit stronger, because it's less intense. You can't do an intense body workout with body weight like you can with heavy weights. Otherwise, you'd see the professional bodybuilders doing push-ups. They don't do that. They may, maybe do a push-up for some pump, but they're lifting iron. Otherwise, bodybuilders would be at home instead of going to the gym and doing steroids and doing push-ups, but no one does that. Even the guys who say, I built this body on... No, they didn't. <laughs> they built that body on steroids and the gym, it's like heavy iron. But, uh, so body weight is good, if you've got shoulder problems, you know, it's, it's a lot less intense. Maybe do that for a year or two and see how you go. You can swim. Yeah, I can swim. Shoulders okay with that? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. 
where yeah. you know so not impact. Movement, it's more like mm. yep. uh, and, and you, you suggest to cut cardio because I love I love like my run but Yeah you can't run if you want to get big muscles. Yeah. Well not big muscles but just having big it's just, it's just really hard to like, all my bodybuilder friends who start running and cycling, they just get small. Can't so, pull a boat with a Lamborghini. What's that? Can't pull a boat with a Lamborghini, you need a big truck. Boat with a Lamborghini. So it's, yeah, that's, that's why, uh, it's just, if you're really slim and you want to put muscle on, you have to cut your cardio out almost totally. Because the cardio is sort of catabolic. You know, that's why you don't see the bodybuilders doing much cardio. Maybe walking on a treadmill or on a bicycle for 10 minutes, but because they know cardio just slims you down too much, you lose muscle because the body's like, hang on, what are we trying to do? Build or slim? So I'd say cut the cardio right down. Did you say eating late at night would help in gain weight too? Yeah, you could eat late at night. You know, eat at midnight or something like that. Yeah, help you gain weight. I heard Donnie for two hours before you go. Yeah. I just say cut the cardio out and just focus on doing body weight and, and you'll be right. I know bodybuilders just set an alarm for the middle of the night. And yeah, yeah. Just eat, try and eat 5,000 calories a day, you know. And the, the, all the juice fast and that, you just burn muscle when you do that. Because when you cut carbohydrates, your body just starts to burn muscle. Yeah, because you're very lean as it is, it just burns the muscle off. Because it goes, well, we don't need the muscle, just get rid of it. We don't have enough calories to support muscle, just burn it off. Um, so yeah, the juice fasting and water fasting, good way to lose muscle. Like you see Dan the Man, you know Dan the Man on YouTube, Life of Generator? If you look at his early videos, he used to be quite muscular. But he's still doing weight training, but he's lost most of his muscle just from calorie restriction over time. So I'd, I'd say uh, eat as much as you can and, and stick with your body weight stuff. But they listen to your shoulders. And in the meantime, work on the internal goals, like the mind and stuff like that. Because that's, that's the best one. There's no point having a, a fit physique if you don't have the mind to enjoy it with. Especially cutting on some food, like I've been having vegan for this four months ago. Some yeah. foods, like meat, have really easy to cut because I've never been a big vegan. Yeah, yeah. But stuff like, you know, gelato with the yeah. stuff like that. Yep. Sweets as well, really hard. Well, I, I sweets all the time, yeah. yeah. Sweets is good on this lifestyle. I'm a sweet tooth, you know. S sweet, sweet, sweet. Got a helmet today. Tastes good. Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to eat the helmet in the <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, just cut the cardio, increase the calories, and it'll happen. I'm good. Cheers. <laughs> Chuck as well, I'll show the crowd. Now there's going to be none left at the 7-Eleven. This is a good one at 7-Eleven as well. It says coconut and sugar. Coconut water and sugar. 87 11 It's quite nice. Another good hit if you're out and stranded. Little coconut flakes in there. Yeah, little coconut flakes. Yeah. Another question? Negatives I've experienced. Probably getting kicked out of Woodstock Fruit Festival. <laughs> being honest. And eating like all those others do. Um, but physiological... Yeah, I mean, you might like eat more... Uh, you might eat like a packet of corn chips or something like that. A bit greasy, you know. Don't feel so good, but... That doesn't last very long. Well, because me and Freely drink a lot of water and we're always fit, so that helps a lot. We go to bed early. Yeah. So I think a lot of issues with people eating cooked food is eating too late at night and they just don't do enough support to move their body around to get the digestion going. Or they've been doing food fasting or whatever, and then they're going to have something heavier and they go, oh my god, like Yeah, so that was a little girl. If your digestion's strong, it's not a worry. But if you don't do much sport, she kicked it. your digestion's going to be pretty, pretty, it's going to be weaker than it could be. Um, like Mike Arnstein, he, he said in the video the other day, oh, if I ate f uh, three pizzas a night, I couldn't move tomorrow. But that's just because his digestion's bad. So he's 
Yeah, yeah. Do you have oh, more yeah. days? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I'll still eat more fruit than, <laughs> than anyone I really know. You know. Oh, someone said the other day, oh, you guys have lost the program. It's like, we eat more fruit than Doug Graham, or I eat more fruit calories per year than Doug Graham does, or anyone else. And if you add up my total fructose sugar calories over the years, more than anyone. Yeah. Same with Freely. Freely eats more fruit calories than probably anyone in the last five years. Uh, it, might, it might be a close, a close second to her. <laughs> no, no, like for girls, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely. That's why I love fruit so much. Oh, yeah. I'm a fruit lover. Yeah, but I mean, if you, you have some days when you don't eat any, any fruit starches. Yeah, sometimes I, I'm, yeah, sometimes I do. Some days, yeah. Yeah. But only if I've had enough fruit, you know. Yeah. Would you have cooked food before, like a race? Yeah. Yeah. Fastest, my fastest 10k ran a 34, 30, 49 at pizza night before. So it's, you know, a lot of it's mental. Yeah. I mean... A lot of it is very, very mental. So, as long as you're getting your carbohydrate intake is up and your fat intake is really low and you're hydrated. I mean, the world's fastest runners live on corn. You know, Tara Shan did a video saying, Oh, I can't eat corn, can't run eating corn. I'm like, Well, the world's fastest runners live on corn. So, if you can't say, if you say someone can't run because they eat corn, it's just purely mental. Purely mental. It just, but you don't have to eat like we do. If you prefer the fruits, go with the fruits. Fruits fantastic, especially if you can get good quality stuff. Fruits are awesome. I couldn't live on pizza for breakfast and lunch and dinner. You know, I'd, I prefer fruit. But vegan pizzas down there when I want it, or rice dishes when I want it, no worries. Dietary, you know, freedom. Need to cook juice. No worries. I can outperform any any raw fitness cycles or run at the moment. You know. I can run faster than Mike Arnstein right now. He did a 257 marathon, I did a 248. I'm faster than Mike Arnstein now. Yeah. Tim Van Orden, faster than him. Um, so. Are you doing ultras too? Not ultras. No. But Mike's, Mike's not in shape now to run an ultra. Really? So, no. He's, he's lost a lot of conditioning. And even Mike's, all Mike Arnstein's fastest time anyway weren't on a 100% raw food diet. He's eating the sports gels and stuff like that, which are basically just like fruit and plastic. It's fine. But we just felt, you know, disgruntled when we get criticised, you know. But they're doing the same thing essentially. But yeah, Mike's a good guy. He's just, he, uh, he's just got too much money and he gets ripped off by scoundrels. Time you go to bed on average. Yeah, that's probably the there you go. That's definitely your issue. Really? It's, it's basically it's sleep, water, sugar. So we just that little triangle. Like a triangle is only as strong as the weakest point. So if the, the sleep point is weak, it sort of crushes it. Yeah. Sleeps everything. Like I, did, I went to bed last night a bit late. I'm not really thinking as clear as I normally do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's sleep, and you cannot digest properly if you've had enough. If you're going to bed late. Because your, your kidneys and your pancreas and your liver, or your parathyroid, all, all your organs and stuff, they need nerve energy to rest. It's like you got a car, food is your fuel, sleep and rest is the battery. So you're going to be putting the best fuel in, but if your battery isn't charging your car, it's not going to be starting properly. It's the same with the body. We can put the best fuel in, water, sport, fantastic, but if we don't get that rest every night, the battery's not charged, the nerve energy's not charged, those things aren't working. So I want to do a 24 hour mountain bike race, I put enough fuel in and water, but because I haven't slept for 24 hours, just like, I can feel my digestion doesn't work properly, I'm just like all spaced out, and you know, because I haven't slept or rested. Yeah. Nothing else changed, the diet didn't change, the water didn't change, I'm getting my sport, but I didn't get my rest. So it's impossible to feel your best if you're not getting enough rest. I find it hard to actually go into sleep at night, usually in the evening I wake up, like I start being creative and I find that 
morning, I'll have to switch off. In the evening? Yeah. So what you got to do is you got to change your mindset and be creative in the morning. Become a morning person. Yeah, I love some days when I actually manage to get out early. I really yeah, yeah. It. It's oh, it's best. Uh, I, I Sunrise. Like, oh, he will tell you that I'm always trying, trying, but like, <laughs> this is the last thing I really struggle with. Just do it. It's like, it's like Yoda said in, in Star Wars, pick pick up the, the lightsaber, Luke Skywalker. And Luke, Luke's going, and Yoda's like, pick it up. And you know, he's going, I'm trying, I'm trying. He's, try is a lie. You either pick it up or you don't. So this is trying. And this is doing. So like, yeah, like, basically, I mean, I, I get late nights as well. I'm not perfect, but my always my goal is 9, 10 p.m. Internet off, dark room. Doesn't matter if you don't sleep. Just as long as you're relaxing, laying there. Some darkness, maybe put an eye mask on. Noise doesn't matter, as long as you get in darkness. And then your body, all your hormones start to recharge. And then you'll find, 100%, things will get better. Okay. It's impossible to function without enough rest. People say, oh, someone said the other day, oh, how do you sleep too much? You know, your diet is not working for you. I'm like, man, you wouldn't last 30 seconds with me on the mountain. You know? Like, <laughs> people, it's just like, it's crazy. But when people ride with me, and I go full gas and like, oh gee, like that, oh yeah, it's working for you. But until then, I went for a ride with a friend in 2006, his brother was giving me crap about my vegan diet. So we went for a mountain bike ride with him. And we're riding up this mountain. And I knew his brother didn't like vegans or whatever, so I let him feel like he was beating me. I'd ride behind him, my head down, I'd <laughs> breathe really loudly, and he'd look, I'd, I'd sort of, from the sunnies, I'd look up and he's looking back at me. And he, his guts going faster and faster and faster. It's a really steep off-road trail, and I'm just like, just, you know, rolling my shoulders, <laughs> pretend I'm suffering, and he's just like going faster and faster, but I kept that, I was keeping his wheel the whole time, he kept looking back, and, and when his breathing was almost like he's having an asthma attack, I just clicked up another gear and just went, bam, past him and rode off in, over the mountain into the horizon, <laughs> and just, you know, smashed it, and then I'm sitting at the top just like that, and he rolls up, he's just totally exhausted, and I was like, yeah, vegan diet's not working for me, is it? You know, <laughs> and he's just like fucking oath, you know, like, and he, he he got more into the vegan lifestyle because he had his thing in his head off. But when he saw that, he was just like, shit, it works. Uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on durian, and can you eat too much durian? Can you eat too much durian? Definitely, because there's, there's a lot of fat in the durian. Um, you know how much durian is too much, because you won't be feeling as good the next day, maybe. Yeah. I don't eat much durian. Due to its fat content, and now and then it's all right. It's a seasonal fruit, though. Durian is a seasonal fruit. Nature says durian is fantastic, but we've got one month window pretty much in nature. You got one month, and then you yeah. have to walk a few hundred kilometers to get more. So, if you're really active, it's not as bad. But um, durian is seasonal. Everything else, you know, bananas year round. Nature wants us to be sugar eaters. So I'd say eat, enjoy your durian. Maybe have it as a snack versus a meal. Okay. If you want to feel super sharp. So have a you know, pack or two of Ganyao. Yeah. Make sure you get your carbohydrates in. Because what happens is, especially fruitarians, they don't get enough sweet fruit and then they start craving the durian. Like I did for so long. And you're having durian every night for dinner. You know, 2,000 calories of durian. And you're getting a bit too much fat to really function properly. Um, you know, or it's function as good as, you, as good as you could if you're eating a bit lower fat. And then you, or you don't drink enough water. If your durian is so dry and sort of like concentrated, if you don't drink enough water of durian, it's easy to get dried out. And you go to the toilet and you see this little golden trinkle and it's dehydrated. <laughs> so that's when you know you need to drink water. And so durian's fantastic, but it's like avocado. It's not as fatty, obviously, but I'd say, yeah, enjoy your durian, but don't go too crazy in it. Do you ever get kidney pain from durian or, or from avocado? No. That may be gallbladder pain on your right here, is it? I uh, know, it's both, side, both okay. my kidneys in the back, yeah. If I eat more than like one avocado at a time. You're better off eating rice or corn or yeah. bananas, potato. Dense calories. Carbohydrate, yeah. low fat. Yeah, enjoy some durian. Um, but, yeah. Don't eat it every night while I'm here. Okay? Yeah, but you can have it every day of the year if it's a small portion. But yeah. it's just, you know, it's just, uh, nature wouldn't have it that way, really. I think it's a. Uh, it's a good fruit, but oh, durian is something I wouldn't have before a race. Because it sort of like slows me down a bit. I'd have rice before a race, I'd have a vegan pizza before a race, a vegan buffet before a race, low fat, but I wouldn't have a big durian meal for, before a race. 
No, we don't. Let's get the cheese. No, I should say low fat vegan pizza. It's almost fat free, really. I mean, it's just yeah. sauce, veggies. Sauce, veggies, dough. flour. Yeah. Low fat. Even vegan pizzas are here. Check. Uh, what you, street pizza? Yeah, I was trying to find that the other day. Okay. Yeah, apparently street pizza does vegan pizzas. Never been there. For me, it's a bit hot to eat pizza. Um, I, for me, pizza's more of a cold weather food. But enjoy your pizza. I'm sure it's here in Chiang Mai. You know. I can't eat very spicy food anymore. I don't like the taste. And yeah, I mean, I, the other night it was like, oof. But I still perform well the next day because I didn't let it get to me too much. But I prefer, I gotta say the word my pet, pet is spice. My means no. Yeah, I say no for everything and then I forget one thing. <coughs> oh, it's spicy, but I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, I just go to the buffet, the vegan cafe here, Ming Kwan, just say my pet and they just point out dishes. I get those. A little bit of spice I can handle, but I don't, I don't know how to taste anymore. No. Um, I about uh, green paste, and I think I've been to Yeah, they love it spicy here. Uh, yeah. I don't know how they eat that stuff. I guess yeah, I should get used like to it. I used to love it, but now I'm like, yeah. a little bit so right, but. Yeah, I used to love eating curry, but now yeah. I can't have it. Yeah, it's too hot, it's too spicy. Yeah, your body lets you know what you want. But yeah, you find the fitter you get, though, that everything looks better, and, and going to bed early. <laughs> I mean, fruit's the ultimate. That's our natural, most natural food. How many hours do you think? In nature, it'd be like 12 hours a night. But yeah. Facebook, YouTube prevents that. Like just Instagram. Even, just even lights. Yeah, lights. So what, what I do is when I go to my hotel room, my, I use my bicycle lights to get around. I don't flip the lights back on. And I, I've got this thing on my computer called, uh, it's called is it called Flux or something? Who uses that? But What's it called? Flux. Flux. Yeah, yeah, Flux. Yeah. It basically dims your computer screen so it's not as like intense. It makes it a bit more like you know candlelight style, and that's really beneficial. Me and Freely both use that. But since using that, we found it's easier to wind down. Yeah. So I've got an automatic setting where when I go to my hotel room at night, I flick my computer on, it's automatically yeah. dimmed down. Yeah, I think F dot L U X. It's a good little tip. And on my iPod. As well, I'd put it on dim at night time, so I'm not like blasting myself on Instagram or whatever. Um, so they're good little tips, help you wind down. And I, I, I avoid engaging in debates at night time on, on the internet. <laughs> you know, but I've learnt now I can switch off pretty quick, but it's easy to get like carried away. Um, can't go to bed, someone said something on the internet. Gotta stay up another two hours. And that, that definitely helps, it's the lights just dim them right down or use a bicycle light wind down because in nature we'd be getting when the sun goes down this is our natural environment I mean how natural does the weather feel here it's so cool the sun goes down you know about seven o'clock six o'clock gets up you know five ish so we're getting you know twelve to seven ten hours a night of rest because in the jungle you can't walk around the jungle you like stab your shin with a, on a, a stick or something like that and if you injure yourself as a human in, in the wild you're pretty much dead you know we now just go to the hospital. That's fine. That's why it's great. But that's the model. That's what humans have hardwired for. Is that early nights? And that's just like you know, that's the way they were designed. So we can fight that, but that's just how it is. But don't think you live in the north, like I do. I mean, in Sweden now there's no night. That's right. And on the wind time there's no. So day. saying you have to create the night again. Sunglasses, shades. Uh, I've got some friends Sun in Finland that say that's not true, Harley. But you create the heat though, don't you? They turn the gas heaters on. They're like, oh, it's not normal to go to bed so early. We stay up all night and party. But like, but you party wearing jackets and heating, like like in the tropics. So we, we're always creating this micro tropical climate around us. We have to have a certain temperature to feel good. And so with the, the sleep. So what I would do if I lived in Sweden or Scandinavia, those countries, I would just be going to bed, you know, 8, 9 p.m. Put an eye mask on, you know and they shut the blinds. The eye masks are good, the blindfold eye mask. Matt Monarch sells them. It's the only good thing he sells, besides <laughs> the dates. But it's like a, a mask called the mindfold. Very nice. I use mine if the room's a bit light. So I thought if I was over there, so freely, if myself and Philly were living over there, um, yeah, we'd be going to bed 8, 9, 10 p.m. Just put the mask on, get up early. When I was in uh, cycling touring in uh, Holland, Netherlands, 
It's like that, I'll be riding, I was like, hey, it's 10 o'clock at night, I'm still riding my bike. It's daylight, I was just tripping out. It was crazy. It was like some drugs, it was like a, it's quite, it was quite unique. Yeah, riding your bike at 10 o'clock at night and it's still light. So you have no dark, almost. In the, in the north, uh, north of Sweden and Norway, the, um, it's 24-7 uh, for like two months or something. And then you get the opposite in the, in the winter time. So it's full black? Uh, almost. That's I mean, the other could be like really? many hours. months of dark or many months of black. It's amazing. Many months of it gets like twilighty for a couple hours a day. That's it. <laughs> That's, that'd, be, that'd be surreal, wouldn't it? But wow. now I think, yeah, maybe there's three or four hours dark now. Yeah. So it, it was like a shock to come here when it's completely dark at uh, 7 o'clock and I'm used mm. to getting yeah. dark around 11 or 12 yeah. at home. Wow, amazing. Yeah. yeah it is it's pretty crazy. So I just try and create that natural setting in your environment. Just like we do in wintertime, we put the heating on. Bring the tropics to Sweden. So we have to bring the, the equatorial sun hours back to Sweden. Um, and maybe you could get a solarium in wintertime for the vitamin D or whatever. That's what I would do if it's that like cold solarium. Um, this is like an observation and I'm quite sure that anyone that's had like loads and loads and loads of fruit has gone through this um when i eat loads of melon i get a stomach ache melon belly yeah yeah, yeah and I've, I've googled it i've gone over it and for myself i've worked out that if i stop drink water and relax 10 minutes 15 minutes it subsides yes but then i've noticed now because I, I live in thailand we, li we live in bangkok i've noticed that um when we go for organic melon melon we don't get it so i'm wondering do you reckon it's something to do with the, like pesticide or something? Nah. This, this is a rumor that I've heard from farming friends. Because yeah. I've we've been here like nearly ten years, yeah. and um, we've got several friends who have got farmer connections, family, blah blah blah, living around Thailand. They told me with melons in Thailand, because they sell them by the kilogram, not by the thing. Mm. You got lots of farmers, not all farmers, but plenty of farmers to beef up the melons. They'll, um, I don't know how or at what stage, but they'll just inject them with water and sugar. Nah, That's, total BS. I've, I've heard this quite a lot. Yeah. And um, I'm wondering if the dirty water or something could be spreading in the melon and doing something nah. to the stomach. Total BS. That, what that, do you reckon? Yeah. Well, I know, I'll share my experience. Yeah, so yeah. It's, why, why does melon belly get it for you eat mangoes or melon or grapes or yeah. banana smoothie? It's like pain here. Or go up your shoulder for 10 yeah. minutes, it's like you're on the ground hurting. Um, I first had that in 2002, smacking back a banana smoothie really, really fast. Got to get to work, chugging it back, rolled my bike to work, had to lay on the ground. Um, so what's going on? Is my liver failing or whatever? It is, uh, I'll answer the watermelon question first. Yeah, it covers mango as well, but as I've had mango. mango. But only once in my life with mango, a few, about a month ago. Yeah. I've had mangoes for years. And yeah. then just once I got it and now I don't get it anymore. To, to cover the, do they inject watermelons here with sugar and water? <laughs> Because what would hap happen is it would be like a, just, the air would get in there, it'd just be like getting, they did it in China, there was a big thing in China. Exploding. Yeah. That's hormone something, isn't it? Well, that's just temperature or whatever. Oh, but okay. you cannot inject a melon and put water and sugar in there without, and then make it look the same. It would yeah. just be, the, the air will get in there and make it go moldy. Yeah. Don't you think it would heal kind of quick? You know, it doesn't, it won't heal. Days, Fruit or... doesn't heal. Like yeah. it's, it's open, mm. you know. Fruit doesn't heal. In that, in that way, it's flies get in there. Or... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the ants will get in there. It'll, just, it'll start leaking, sort of thing. You can't put that much. You, <laughs> the, the, the farmers, the, the, the syringe. Yeah, I wouldn't know what kind of syringe they would. I, I don't like, know. It would have to be like a, a thirty gauge syringe, and you'd, you'd be sitting there for hours. It just wouldn't financially mm. add up. Yeah, I'm, I've gone through the pro. The, the, yeah. Is it possible? Is it not possible? But I've, I've just heard it so many times from. Maybe yeah. it's the same one rumour circulating. Yeah, in China it was a massive thing and the government yeah. clamped down and said, look, this is bullshit, you know, like, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is wrong. Um, but wasn't the China one, it was some kind of like a growth accelerator that was being used in the wrong no, way? No, they, they said the water sugar thing as well. Oh, okay, And, and they okay. said food colouring dye, so oh. they could turn unripe melons to look ripe. Right, but right. It's, 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 uh, okay. Maybe a couple of farmers did a little bit here and there, and it made a big rumour, but it's, it's a bit like, it's a bit of a wives' tale, um, a lot of people say, oh, I don't eat watermelon, I eat my Big Mac, because watermelon, you know, they, they, they inject it with stuff. Yeah. It lets people 
think, you know, I don't eat watermelon, I'm, I'm healthy. It's a bit like, uh, you know, I don't eat sugar, I eat Big Macs instead, I'm healthy. It's a bit of a greenwash, but it's a total bunk. And in terms of the pain, I've, I've, eat, I've grown my own melons in my own backyard and eaten them too fast or whatever, got in pain. So I knew that they were organic because I grew them myself. Then I've been on friends' farms who grew their melons, organic, the same pain. And I've had conventional melons pain. I don't get it anymore though. Is that because you're just not eating it fast anymore? Maybe or are you that. Eating it, coupling it, were you eating it together with water? No, but I'm, I'm, I'm better hydrated now perhaps and I'm, yeah. I'm a lot fitter. Right. And I'm going to bed early. When I was a fruitarian, I used to go to bed very late. Right. It's primarily because I was on the internet a lot looking at stuff. And oh, is the boring. quantity of you eating like less of melon now? And no, I'm, I'm, when I get mangoes into me, I'm slamming the mangoes. Yeah. Now, mangoes are quite, I've always been fine with mangoes. Mm -hmm. only, I mean, sorry, except for once. Yeah. Um, you will I did, get I've got a video raisins, on it. But you will get it from grapes, though. So it has something yeah. to do with the water content. So water content, food. definitely. Your body can't process too much water if you're dehydrated. So you need to get hydrated and then you can eat yeah. it fast. Like I think it's more to do with the. I did a video about it. Just type Bell and Bell into YouTube. Um, I think it's more to do with hydration and nerve energy. Going to bed too. Or something, you go to bed normally. Oh, it's fluctuating so much. Yeah, yeah. So I find if I'm having early nights, it won't happen. Yeah. Consistent early nights, 8, 9, 10 p.m. And often I used to eat late at night as well. Yeah. I'd be up late, I'd be eating like salad at 12 midnight, eating so much volume when I was in Costa Rica. And then in the morning we had these amazing melons. But all of us were getting melon belly and we're all doing the same things. We all sat up late partying and eating salads which were about to explode. We get up in the morning, smash down some water and then have some melon. And so all of us had this melon belly and we're like, what's going on? Um, it was because we were going to bed too late and eating too late. And uh, we were all getting it. So that's what I find. If you go to bed earlier and eat earlier, you won't get it over time. I think it's something to do with uh, just the osmolality of the, the water and sugar volume. That just goes away when you go to bed early and not eating late. What time do you normally eat dinner? Um, again, it, it depends what I've been doing. Um, yeah. It really could be so normal time, massively late, it could be anything. Yeah, I find so, that eating late, because then your food hasn't really digested, because you People often we eat, we're busy, we've got to go to bed, we've got kids, work, whatever, eat something, go to bed, and you're sort of laying on it, yeah. and in the morning wake up, we'll have some fruit, go I'll to do bed. So I, I, I self-experiment, so I'll do what you do, I'll, yeah. I'll go to bed, I'll do a, like a week of um, going to bed early, then I'll eat like heaps of, le heaps of melon on. in the morning. You start the day with a litre like of water first, yeah. okay. and, when, and then when you're eating, try and portion it out, like eat slower. Yeah, I kind of race it down. Yeah, because we're all busy, you know, we're like... I mean, I, I used to eat really fast because I had my brother, Julian, he would eat faster than me because he's older than me, and then he would like have, get dessert first and tease me with it, you get the ice cream like waving from my face, <laughs> so I'd be like trying to catch up. And so it became this real competition with my brother, like who could eat firstest, uh, fastest, especially with my nanas because she always gave us dessert. So we'd go to nanas, and as soon as you put the plate down, we just look at each other like, Whoa! just guzzling it like dogs. And uh, so I became a very fast eater. And then when I got into fruit lifestyle, you're getting hungry and you're eating this fruit, and you're like, this is so good, and you're just chowing it down, like, like you're eating, like in your prison, you've got your arm here, just blocking their people. And so I learned as well to eat slower, just to relax and enjoy the meal, savour it. It's a good idea, anyway. Um, especially melon, sometimes it's so good, and you're trying to get the calories, and you're just like, eating faster. So I found now, if I'm going to have a melon, I'd eat it slower, maybe have a half, an hour and a half, you know, in 20 minutes time, or whatever, try that. Um, so eating slower, eating earlier, earlier for dinner, drinking water in the morning, a quart of water, a litre of water, and going to bed earlier. Those, those factors it will definitely go away. So it's not the organic, it's not the, the water they're injecting the watermelons. But it's easy to think that. It's the, totally not. The organic might have a small, uh, lesser food, uh, fructose content than, than the... Organic should have higher fructose content. Well, the, you, said, you were saying that the, the organic is... That's apt to give it to me. So it might be, it might have a lower sugar content because it's not being pumped with. Yes. Well, can you have Yeah. The, 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 let it pump the sugar, the water and some sugar. No, I'm saying, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, with uh, the reason why they use those chemicals yeah. is because they make bigger fruit. Yeah, it's more like potassium the, nitrate and stuff like that. Yeah. It makes the, it some that will oftentimes make the fruit sweeter. Maybe. No, it doesn't. Potassium nitrate makes the water no. hold, the fruit hold more water. But they use it in Australia, potassium nitrate just <laughs> pops the fruit out. But you bite into it, it's just like no flavour. Really? It's just almost water, you know. 
So the less water content, the sweeter it's going to taste. In the U.S., the conventional watermelons I've had are bigger and they're like significantly sweeter than the majority. Because they're of good the quality. Organic. Yeah. Go to Australia, and the melons are just crap. Yeah. Well, the, even the organic ones are just inedible almost. Really. It's really hard to get good watermelon in Australia compared to the U.S. When we went to Costco eating watermelon, it's better than any organic melon I've ever had in Australia. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. Because in the U.S., they grow on good quality stuff generally. Yeah. Yeah, and they Australia. wouldn't even let it in the country. If it's, if it's low on the bricks meter, they just send it up to Canada. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> they, they won't, we won't even need it. Because the U.S. people are more fussy than Australians. Yeah. Which is good in a way. Bad in others. But where can you guys do the organic chocolate? Where? Where? In Alaska, you know? Like in Chiang Mai? No, in Sydney. Sydney? Yeah. Because I know that, app, you know, talking about apple and that's it. But when you go to mangoes, it's... I'd, I'd go to Flemington Markets. A wholesaler, there's about four organic wholesalers at Flemington Market and they sell to the public. But you have to buy boxes, you know. If you go in there and say, I want a mango, uh, two carrots, and a hand of bananas, they'll be like, So yeah, you go in there with the car and boxes. You by yourself, you gotta. Did you have a car or? Yeah, 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 but just by myself. That's okay. There you go. Okay. Flemington Market. That's all right, we're going direct. So this day you call in the... Just go in there. What time is it? Yeah, you can get good deals there, especially if the the uh, bananas are a bit spotty or whatever. You get some good deals. Mangoes can be good as well, good deals in uh, December. Those apples, they the for nine just no sugar, no. You bite into it, and it's like great. I just spent fifty bucks on, on compost. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, what? What? If I lived in Sydney, I, I'd shop at Flemington Markets. And when I lived in Sydney with Freely, we shopped at Flemington Markets. Definitely. It took us an hour and a half to drive there from Randwick in the traffic, but it's worth it. Gabba rice. Yeah, and uh, well, the, the less processed is the carbs, but I mean, it makes it blood straight away. Sticky rice with mango, three things. You should be blooded after a meal. You can't eat a big meal and, and nothing. You've got to be like Buddha. Yeah, but bad, bad bloating, you know? Bad bloating. There's, there's no such thing as bad bloating. That's like, just normal. Like, you, you have to, when you eat good food, you, like, if you see Freely, she's like pregnant. It's like a food baby. Heavy, heavy breath, heavy breath. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's like when you, when you run up the, up the mountain, you're sweating. You're heavy breathing, your legs are on fire. It's normal. You were saying that naughty, naughty fruit after you eat carbs. Yeah, but, You're talking about sticky rice and mango. That's, that's yeah, if you that's haven't maybe, maybe like, you know, like if I wanted to be, if I wanted to make myself hurt, I'd have fruit, uh, and I'd say I'd have my dinner, and then have watermelon afterwards. And maybe some uh, some soft drink for some <laughs> carbonation. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I'd be like, you're full gas city. But if you're eating healthy food, you have, there's no worries, you know. So have your fruit before your dinner. If you want sticky rice, it means you haven't had enough fruit beforehand. So if you're gonna have sticky rice, have the mango first, wait a couple of minutes, then chase down the rice. But don't have mangoes after the meal because yeah, it can ferment a bit and be a bit. But I don't do that anymore. I don't eat fruit after my, my dinner. Because you're very thin, though, very lean. How you do much? Yeah, I mean, how how fast can you run a five k at the moment? You're doing. Are you are you really fit at the moment or not really? Yeah, we've got time to tired. I haven't been running for two months. Okay. Yeah, so what you, what you find is your fitness goes up, digestion gets stronger. And if you're just on a juice fast, that destroys your digestion. Because when you have no fiber in your, in your muscles, they get weak. Because the digestion has a lot of uh, muscles involved. So if I don't run, I have to run every week, otherwise my legs get weak for running. So same with, with digestion, if you just do on juice or watermelon, the body just loses the muscles. It doesn't lose them, but they get weaker because they're not being used. That's why if you want strong digestion, you have to use your digestion. And when you do juice fast or whatever, 
So it makes you weak, <laughs> digestion wise. But you get stronger if you keep eating again. But what people do, they make the mistake of like, oh, I can't eat that, I can't eat this. And then they just like fade into nothing. And they're like, ah, oh, stuff it all, just give me whatever. Yeah, and that's what happens most. That's what you see all the time is people, they do a juice fast and they eat something else like a pizza. Go, oh, I don't feel good because the digestion is weaker now. People say, oh, that's not right. Pizza's not natural food. Look, well, pizza's healthy if it's good. Like low fat vegan pizza, veggies on top, whatever, it's fine. But, you know, if people are getting sort of so restricted with the diet, then, you know, yeah. like people, I know people can't eat bananas. But they're like, <laughs> they're not, they don't last in the lifestyle because they've become so weak digestion wise because they're living on like juices and watermelon. <clears throat> and then they, they, they always crack, 100%. They last a few months or a year or two, and then you see them back at whatever. Yeah. So my tip would be just to force the food in, and it's normal to feel full after a meal. Yeah. But if you want less pain, don't have fruit afterwards. If you have fruit after your meal, it means you didn't eat enough fruit during the day. Yeah. So I slam in the sugars and the fruits, so when I finish my meal, I don't want anything sweet. You shouldn't want dessert. Have dessert before your meal. And then my, often you'll find I, that's all I want for dinner, just is fruit, some vegetables maybe. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah. Drink, don't drink afterwards. Right? You can drink afterwards. It's all right. The, what it is, what I'm trying to say is that purity doesn't work. But what works is having a template. All right. So what I do is I wake up in the morning. With pigeons. I drink my quart of water, and then I have a bit of like a couple of bananas, and I go ride my bike for an hour or so, just easy come back, have another quarter water, a litre water, and then I have my fruit, maybe 10, 20 bananas. Mm. Yeah, and then I have uh, do my work or you know, do the market tour. And then I come back, have another quarter water, maybe some more bananas or mangoes, and do this talk, drinking back you know, a litre of sugar. And maybe I'll afterwards get some more sugar, juice or mangoes or whatever, and then I'll have my rice dinner. And I won't have anything after that. Yeah, and have a, a, a litre of water before I go into the restaurant. And maybe if you need to, a sip of water with a meal. If you eat a meal and you're thirsty afterwards, you didn't drink enough water beforehand. If you eat a meal and you want sweet afterwards, you didn't eat enough, enough sweet before your meal. So what people do is they, they don't drink much water and then they eat something and they're like, oh, I need some water, but I can't drink water because it's bad. And then they get more dehydrated and then they just, it's just a downward spiral. So drink before your meal. It's okay to drink afterwards, but if you, if you need to drink water after, you didn't drink enough before. It's like if you run up the mountain and your legs are sore, you haven't enough training beforehand or whatever. You've done too much too soon. So my tip is just to simplify it. Just drink one litre of water before each meal. And then you won't want to chug afterwards. And if you have to chug, it's okay to have a little bit, you know. Or just drink as much as you want. But the ideal is drink before your meals. But I know people who, who, who get dehydrated, like I, can't, I can't drink anything after a meal. And they just, they're just trashed for a week. They're dehydrated, you know. They're trying to be so pure, but it doesn't work, you know. You want to have a template of excellence versus total perfection. Perfection never works. Perfection is marketing. Excellence is what we're looking for, not perfection. Yeah, perfection is Andre Agassi acing it every single time for the Nike advert. It's not reality, but excellence is Andre Agassi gets most of the time it gets it right. So drink before your meal, one litre, see what happens. Ali, I'm itching to ask you, do you feel, do you ever feel addicted to cooked food? Do I feel addicted to cooked food? <laughs> some, okay, some people, some, some people say I'm a cooked food addict, some people say I'm a sugar addict, some people say I'm a fruit addict. No, but what do you think? Well, yeah, well, I'll get to it. Um, some people say I'm a, I'm a sleep addict, some people say I'm a... A but drama addict? I'm not following anything of the Facebook stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I haven't even watched many of your videos. That's good. I just want to know how you feel since you've changed from fruit-based, mm. mainly fruit-based and raw, yeah. to, to cook. Uh, because whenever I have a cooked meal, I feel it. The following day, I don't feel as good. Then you just need fruits. You know? yeah, yeah, but I mean, a lot of it can be psychological as well. For me, but yeah. I'm really curious why why you think cooked and and do you feel addicted, honestly? And and can you stop whenever you want? Yeah. You want? Well, my definition of addiction is knowing something's really bad for you, but you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. My definition of a habit would be 
doing something, but you can stop at any time. So, a definition of addiction for me with food would be someone who keeps eating meat, but they know it's going to give them heart disease. Or a smoker who's got lung cancer, and they know it's not helping, but they keep smoking. You know? mm. I don't have any illnesses because I'm eating rice or vegan pizzas. Maybe it's damaging you and you don't know it as well. People reverse all sorts of diseases on a McDougal lifestyle, which is very low fruit. Yeah. They're eating rice, they're eating vegan pizzas for dinner and reversing heart disease, you know? I know, I know yeah. the vegan, so, like, low-fat vegan works. But I've been really sick in my life. You yes. are very healthy. I mean... Yeah. Because I'm an athlete, I can quickly work out what works or not. Yeah, I can feel it in my legs, I can feel it in my power meter. I can, yeah. Yeah, so it's, this is working for me. Yeah. But I used to be really sick and really fatigued. So, I, 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 uh, I don't see myself as an addict. I know people do. People say, I've had, I've had clinical psychologists tell me, Harley, you are an emotional eater. Because when I got hit by a bus in 2003, I had to be uh, psychologically assess, uh, assessed for my, uh, my, my insurance payout. And so I had to go for a few uh, psychiatric assessments. And they would ask me stuff. <laughs> and I would just talk about the diet, you know. And then I said, I, I'll eat 30 oranges for breakfast. You know, so I go to the vegan restaurant and eat five tofu burgers, and they're writing it down. You know, like just wait, 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 just let me write it down. <laughs> and, and then they didn't tell me. You know, then, then their conclusion was you have a, uh, emotional uh, binge eating disorder. You know, <laughs> they're the experts. You know? So I am, I am addicted to cooked food. I am an emotional eater. I'm a binger. Well, what's your preference, really? You say that fruit is the best, but. How do you feel? Do you really enjoy your rice meal? Yeah, I love the rice meal, you know, but I have to have my fruit first. But if we give you the choice between amazing Nandok Mai mangoes and, and some white rice with some veggies, you know. Depends what time of day it was. Sorry? Depends what time of day it was. Yeah. If it was the morning, always the fruit. Lunch, mm -hmm. always the fruit. Dinner, mostly the fruit, but not always. And back at home, do you cook yourself? Yeah, rice. Or we go to restaurants. Do you have a rice cooker? Yeah, rice cooker is good. Them, yeah. yeah, rice cooker. But again, like I tell people, yeah, yeah, we don't. People, I'm not saying that you have to eat this way. No. Yeah, I'm saying that fruits, fruits the most important food to eat. Fruits the most important food to eat. But it just feels like it's a bit of a shame because you, you know you were a fruitarian. You called yourself a fruitarian before. Yeah. I'm not sure if you were fruitable fruitarian, but. Um, it, it seems to be the best for our body, for our physiology. Mm -hmm. but why go back to, to cook, you know, for the evening? You know that your digestion is going to be slow. It's going to stop you from fine. getting yeah, yeah. the full rest during the night. You're probably not going to perform as well as... I can perform as good on, on raw foods or as cooked food. Oh, yeah? yeah I've, I've, done the, I've done the experiments myself. You, um, you know, it's, it's not a real issue for me. Yeah. I, I guess... Then again, I lie because if I just ate fruit, I'd probably be 55 kilos and go a little bit faster. But no one would be here because they look at me like, <laughs> you look like, you know, you've got an eating disorder. You know? So I'm already lean enough. So if yeah, I like, just live on pure fruit, I'd, I'd probably be 55 kilos and fly out the mountain a bit faster. But everyone would be like, I don't look like that guy. He's like, you know, just what's wrong with him. Is, is there a social aspect as well? To you? No, if not for me, there's not. I mean, I enjoy going to restaurants with people. I enjoy going to restaurants with people that, and then supporting the restaurant and ordering heaps of food and showing people good food. I enjoy that. But I, I never eat something because I'm worried about what people think of me. But I know I've got friends who go to their parents' house and they'll eat meat and stuff because they, they don't want to cause any conflict. I'm happy to go to my grandma's house when they're eating sausages and eat grapes. I used to do that every Christmas. Go to their, my grandma and step-grandpa's house and eat grapes or cherries for dinner while eating the meat and stuff and the, my grandpa, step-grandpa used to wave the food in front of my face so you, you're missing out on the meat all my whole life people wave food in my face you know <laughs> um, but he, now he's dead from massive heart attack you know? so I, I miss those times where he used to make fun of my diet but now he's dead uh, massive heart attack so That's I would say he was very strong minded but I would say that the majority of people are really affected by it. bingo and that's one of the reasons why myself and Freely are successful on YouTube is because it's like, you know, we don't care what people think. Yeah. You know? So that, that's the main reason we're successful on YouTube is because people will slam us. We're like, as long as you're watching us, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll go to a dinner, and as long as I'm eating what I want to eat, 
that's all that matters for me. So, I, but I understand the social aspect, and that's what I love about our lifestyle advice, is people can incorporate this everyday world. But do you think it's easier to incorporate raw till four than crooked ball? For sure. Because you can always get something to eat. I mean, it's, if you live in Chiang Mai, yeah, you can always have some, if you live in a house here and you work from home, you can always have a massive fruit stash and always have fruit in your house ripening up. Like right now I've got bananas in my fridge, so I can just reach out and grab them. But my goal isn't to live on 100% fruit, because I don't need to, you know, like, <laughs> but. So who would you recommend I enjoy eating my rice and stuff. eating a fruit of all diet? Pardon? Who would you recommend? People who want to do that. If people honestly say, I don't want to eat rice, I don't like the taste of rice, I don't like vegan pizzas. I don't like going out to dinner. You don't have to. You can stay at home and eat bananas for dinner. If people love doing that, you know, for sure, they can do it. If they don't mind being so, so skinny and just living on fruit, that's fine as well. Fruit and vegetables, I mean. Yeah, fruit and veggies, yeah. Fruit and greens. Yeah. I struggle to maintain my weight as it is. I still have some, I know, I mean, I've read a lot of stuff about nutrition and if you were to give an advice to someone who is maybe ill, has got a condition of some sort, would you recommend raw till 4 or raw 80 10, 10 Depends what the goals are. You know? Depends how much money they've got, depends where they live. I could say just to go and eat fruit and they live in Norway. Mm. <laughs> or they live in outback Australia. You should just eat a 100% fruit diet. And they've got kids and they've got, they're working a cattle ranch. They can't do it. So I say, this is what you could do, this is what you should do. You decide what you can work for. But either way, you'll get your excellent results. But what people do is they say, rice is poison, rice will, yeah, it's, it's rubbish. Because you've got guys like Dr. McDougall or Neil Bernard or Cordell Esselstein that are re reversing all these diseases on a starch diet. So, but it's a great the questions you ask. That's what I love about these discussions. It really yeah, gets it out there. So I've, oh, that's a fantastic question. Yeah. It's, I, I love continue, it. continue, but I'll let other yeah. people. Yeah, that's good. It's, it's, it's everything. Yeah, I know, I know. So it depends on what someone's goal is, you know, if someone wants to be like... Yeah. I don't train very much, because I, I would get too thin as well, you know. Like in January, I'll get really, really, really skinny. But that's another thing about working out. I mean, people feel a bit bad, I think, when you see those athletes work out, like, do, like, those marathons and, like, crazy stuff that's not reachable to most of us. That's right. It makes us feel bad. So why reach for so much, you know, performance, sports performance when you can just do like one hour a day? That's like me, that's what we do, you know. Yeah. We show people you don't need to take drugs, you don't need to do this, you can, you know, have a bit more fun. But I tell people if you're getting too skinny, cut out the cardio. That's what I do. I, I train in January, the rest of the year, do I just do base maintenance. But January I go crazy. So so what's your, your ultimate goal? Do you have any <coughs> My ultimate goal, goal is just to get my book out there and get this like a worldwide audience of like, this is a dietary option that works. If you want to be slim and eat socially, and have energy and save money or whatever, you can have your fruits, you can have your rice. So we give, we give the power to the people. We give everybody an option. So if you're in India, or Cambodia or whatever, you is can do it. Is that because the, 80, the raw 80-10-10 doesn't work? Is that because so many drop out of it? And it's good, but it's not realistic all the time, you know? But your diet, majority, ideally, should be fruit. High carb, low fat vegan. Easy on the oil, easy on the salts, a bit of sport, go to bed early when you can. Have the balance. But too many people lose their lifetime because they're trying to be perfect. But it never works, you know? My issue personally is that um, I like a mainly raw, yeah. a low fat, and sometimes I'd like to treat myself with the restaurant. And yeah. even if I keep it low fat, no salt, no spices, I feel it the following day. Yeah, but if, if you and get fitter, I don't feel as good. Yeah. So that's what makes me stick to the raw. Then, then stay with that. But if, if I was sedentary, I'd just eat fruit. If I didn't do any sport. I just eat fruit because fruit digests the easiest. I agree. So you might you might say I want to eat I'm going to treat myself. I treat myself every single meal. I'm going to eat every single meal. Say we're freely. We eat exactly what we want. Oh, with no regret. I love the fruit as well. Man. Yeah. So we love feeling fit and feeling lean and eating a lot of food. So we have the balance there. Balance is important. Does it affect your emotions? 
when you eat a little bit of spices no. cooked. No. If I eat too much fat, I feel a bit like, oh, what, what, what? But it doesn't make you feel depressed. What I'm a about bit... freely? I'm interested. Same, same with freely. I would love her to be here. Yes. I have my question is, am I the same questions. as freely? <laughs> We're like twins, basically. Um, my answer is exactly the same as hers. But I think a woman reacts differently. I mean, yeah, obviously men and women are different, but in terms of emotional, she's hardcore, man. She's not like she used to be. She's a lot more like... Some people do something, the whole day is ruined. Like, someone smiles at them the long way in the morning, and they carry that all day. Like my grandma, she'll tell me stories from a few weeks ago. And I was like, I don't even talk to her anymore now. So some people emotionally, they're just victims. So I say, that's why we encourage the champion mindset. Some people eat like a bit of rice, <laughs> they feel like committing suicide or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the state of our mind is very important. It's just a choice at the well, moment. Anyway, just to finish, I've, I've just learned to accept the consequences of whether if I eat cooked, I just know that I'm not going to feel great the following day, but well, I still want to enjoy what I'm eating. Think of what comes about. That's yeah, what matter. you think about comes about. So. Like this, yesterday morning, I went up the mountain, my tyre's half flat, and my bag wasn't pop, it was like walking around like that. And the guys were going faster and faster and faster. So if I, and I just, I didn't really have a warm up, I just had a little water, I was feeling a bit, you know, I could feel my stomach. But I didn't focus on that. I totally ignored it, like a meditation, like a Zen meditation. I just totally ignored, my bag was wicking around, my tyre's half flat, I just had a little water, so I'm feeling a bit heavy. I just totally illuminated that, and I smashed them up the mountain. But I was on, yeah, it's on the edge. So if I, if I was thinking negatively, then I would have been dropped. And, and I did my marathon a few, a few weeks ago. I ran a 2:48 marathon on 15 k's a week training, which is pretty much unheard of. But that whole marathon, I was like schizophrenic, with like grandiose positivity. And Freely was pacing me. I said, I want you to stay with me this whole race. I'm just going to go schizo. And I went schizo, and I ran a peak. It's just a choice at the moment. What's the difference between a kid who can do a massive jump on his BMX and me. He believes he can do it. I believe I'm going to kill myself. I'm sure I could learn it, but mentally I just like, you know. But that's the extreme end. Just feeling good is just a choice in the moment. Does cooked food affect your positivity? No. But again, cooked food's not all cooked food, is it? Yeah. This is cooked food. This, you know, I, I couldn't tell if this was cooked or raw. But there's plenty of people that say, pretend they that's could. Right. I can't tell, but it's cooked. It's pasteurized. It's cooked. It's dead food. But I feel fantastic on it. If you did it, if you served me up and tried to make me guess, which is what I couldn't tell, but it's cooked. This is the same as eating a Big Mac, according to some people. My obese fruitarian friends think this is the same as a Big Mac. So when they don't get enough fresh fruit, they go, they go, they don't go to 7-Eleven for this. They go to the McDonald's and go, well, cooks cook, man. No, hardly. I'm hardline. I'm like Mike Hansen. I'm a hardline. Cooks cook. And well, that's why I keep failing. So cook's not cooked. High carb, vegan. You know, high, and high water content is good as well. So if you're gonna have your rice, maybe have it with some soup. So it's a bit more high water content. Because if you are dehydrated and you have some rice, you know, high water content is good as well. That's why I don't eat pizza in this, when it's hot, because I want it to be dry. Gluten, I mean, it's gonna affect you, come on. Gluten. <laughs> it's what people I'm eat just with. Looking for something. Look at them. <laughs> well, I can eat gluten and, and before performance really well. It's a poison. If, if, if we tell ourselves, I mean, mercury is a poison, I agree. You can't drink a litre of mercury and go, it's fine. But people make things in their head bigger than they really are, in my opinion. Physiologically, though, I mean, how can we digest gluten? Well, I digest it fine now. I agree. I agree that gluten is too high a protein to be consumed as a staple. I agree. Definitely. It's just like we need water, but you can't drink 50 litres of water in a day. So gluten is fine, but when people try and base their whole diet on gluten, there's too much protein, I agree. But I wouldn't call it a poison. I'd call it a food which needs to be limited, or you don't have to eat it if you don't want it. You can have rice or fruit or corn. So, but I wouldn't, when people say it's a poison, I, I disagree, because a poison is something that's gonna kill you. I don't know anyone who got, went to a restaurant and ate, you know. Generally the people with gluten sensitivity, like I used to have, just have poor health. Same with fr fructose intolerance. You know, people, I can't eat fruit, Harley. So yeah, because you're not healthy. Nature's trying to get rid of you. So you don't have to eat gluten, but 
pretty much, you know, like if, again, like the, we said yesterday the, at the meet, uh, if a tiger comes through here now and we're in the jungle, who's going to get eaten? The person who can't run as fast as the, the tiger, probably a child or whatever. So nature is survival of the fittest. If my diet wasn't working for me, I'd be getting worse instead of getting better at 37 because I don't have a history of athletics as a kid. Yeah, I loved athletics, but I was always a sick kid. Uh, and I see people, I train people, and I see what happens when they try and do 100% raw food. They often get in their head and, you know, just make it bigger than it really is. Holy, I ate some rice last night. I can't perform. Like, it's in your head, yeah. So, but if you feel better on fruit, eat your fruits. But if you, if you have a backup plan, don't beat yourself up about it. That's the secret. Just like people who ride up the mountain and they can't keep up with me. And they feel bad for it or whatever. It's, it's not so much a backup plan, it's just that like temptation. Because everyone around you is doing something different, they're eating cooked. You're drawn to it because you should eat it. And, and you go to the restaurant, you try to ask for a salad and you know... The Don't eat there, just have a fruit, bring your fruit with you. Yeah. If that's what you should eat, eat what you want to eat. It's a kind of like almost jealousy that you can't be part of it because we are social beings. Very. We need to be part of a group. Definitely. We need to eat the same thing. And I feel the same with my daughter as well when I take her to a birthday party. I, I don't limit her. I just tell her, okay, you know what we're eating. You can try just a little bit. I mean, I try yeah. to limit the damage, but it's a social thing. So when I said I want to eat sometimes when I'm Going yeah, out yeah. In a group, or yeah. Yeah, but I know I'm gonna feel. Crazy. Then don't do it. If you don't want to do it, don't it's freaking do it. No, no, no. It's as simple as that. You pick it up or you don't. You eat it or you don't. You can't try to sit down. Yeah, you can't try to sit down. That, that's what. That, that's why I felt. I've always felt frustrated on a raw food diet until I started carving up. Yeah. And my only way of, at the beginning, because I couldn't eat enough fruit, I started eating potatoes in the evening. Yeah. And then I saw how I felt the following day. I, I didn't want but how you... the other stuff. But then I replaced potatoes by fruit. I, I've increased my, my capacity to eat carbs. And that made a massive difference. Finger. Can I ask a yeah. quick, quick question that yeah. she's not asking that she should be? Um, do you think that the 80-10-10 diet is what got you and Freely to where you are so you can eat cooked food now and not have an issue? Do I think all of our fruit consumption has made us better? Yeah, for sure. But we still eat most of our calories from fruit. Yeah. You know? So what's gotten where we are now is going to be better earlier. That makes yeah. a big difference. And, and being hydrated constantly. Starting, basically, the, the biggest tip I could recommend would be start a day with a quart of water. Yeah, 800 mils, 200 mils, whatever. Before you eat anything, have that. Have, you know, have some fruit with 30 minutes of getting up, have something sweet, and then go do your exercise or your sport or whatever, ride right to work. Then have your breakfast within an hour, waking up if you can. And go in a bit early, 8, 9, 10 p.m. That's going to improve digestion and our mentality when we eat something. You know. How do you feel? Uh, well, I feel after a cooked meal the previous night, uh, I feel hungrier, like more hungry in the morning, the next morning, like a craving, like maybe empty get... stomach like I used to have, whereas when I'm 100% raw, I don't have that feeling well, in the morning. Hunger is not felt in the stomach, yeah, I know. that's just digestion. But it's that empty stomach feeling that makes me want to eat. Your hunger pangs Well, I know I'm not hungry, and that's I, not I hunger. keep drinking water yeah. just then and then it goes, but yeah. how do you explain that? That's not hungry in the stomach, that's like you're just digesting a bit, you know, moving around, emptying your stomach, whatever. That's hunger's, hunger's in the throat, it's in the mouth. You go run a marathon, and when you run out of glycogen, you get this like obsession with like sweet and juicy, it's like I need something, I need something to eat now. It's not in the stomach, it's in the mouth, in the throat, when you're what's called bonking in, in running or cycling, when you're about to hit the wall, you run out of glucose, and you get this like hunger in your mouth. That's, that's hunger. This is stomach, I don't know what that is, that's just like, you ate too late at night, you didn't drink enough water that day, and uh, yeah, things are digesting slower. It? How do you deal with it? You just drink, drink water. water? Drink more water the day before. If you're going to go out with your friends that night and have a, a meal, then make sure you drink two or three, four liters that day. But people do, what they do, do go, oh, I'm at work, I don't go to the toilet, you know, I'll just drink half a liter today or whatever. And then they go out for dinner, they eat something, it's just like not enough water to digest it, and then they're like, oh, cooked food's bad. 
it's more their, 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 their lifestyle. So if you're gonna eat something that's low water content, have some water beforehand, definitely. Or have your rice with some soup, some vegan soup. High water content, things digest better. So if you're gonna have pizza, I, if I'm gonna have pizza, I'll chug you know, two liters of water beforehand. Because I know the pizza's very dry. Put pizza through a juicer, <laughs> you know, knowledge, knowledge comes out. So if you're gonna have, we need high water content things to digest. So if you're gonna have anything cooked, high water content, well make sure you have the water beforehand. And that's the secret. But it's never as good as water rich fruit. Like yeah. the water rich fruits. The eat the fruits. You have to do what you want to do. And if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna eat hundred percent raw food diet, fruits and vegetables, then you have to get enough calories from them. Otherwise you're gonna to wanna to eat other things. That's it. Yeah. And if you got it maybe go out a few times a month for your friends, pick a thing that you like eating, maybe corn salad or some soup, vegan soup or whatever, and don't beat yourself up about it. You know, it's fine. It's just plant food, high carb. Oh, I stop, just, I just have my going meal before yeah, yeah. going and just order salad, but it's salad, still, if you can, be, you need more, you need carbohydrates though. Maybe what you can do is have so much fruit before you go out, and then you have your salad at the restaurant, and that's enough for you. Yeah, what I'm talking about is the addiction. I still feel like it's I'm still addiction. addicted to, to the food I used to eat. I mean, cheese for me is like, for example, when I see it. Yeah, because you're hungry. It. I don't want it. I but don't you're hungry. It, yeah, yeah. But I still feel attracted to it. Because that's what you made for so many years of your life. I know. But I'm when you're hungry, you yeah, go back to old things. Yeah. Didn't have a problem. Hungry or tired, I don't know. It's hungry. Matter. Your tired. body needs oh. calories. It's going, I'm this, not, what we're eating today doesn't work. Give us that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why if we uh, feed our kids junk food, food, it's yeah. harder for them because That's it's high in calories. So brother goes, yeah, give me that, give me that. So when the child gets hungry, it goes, fruits dilute, get rid of that, go to the higher calorie things. So you need to eat, if you want to, do, if you want to eat clean, yeah, like I don't crave, you know, I could have vegan cheeses and all that stuff. I don't crave it, because, I, but I do if I'm like not eating enough carbohydrates or nuts or something like that. I've got a good friend of mine owns an organic shop. He's got these amazing macadamia nuts. And they're just sitting there like that. And he, I can eat in his shop any time. He doesn't care, so I promote his shop a lot. So he's got these macadamia nuts. And I know if I walk past the macadamia nuts, I'm like, hmm, macadamia nuts. I haven't eaten enough carbohydrates, you know. But, but I used to back in the day, I was like, yeah, macadamia's not healthy fats. I'm eating handfuls of macadamia nuts and just, you know, not feeling the best. Too much fat in the blood, just like spaced out. So. I learned the macadamia nuts, if I'm craving them, I'm not eating enough carbohydrates. Okay. So and if, if I'm craving a, a vegan cheesy pizza, I might need enough carbohydrates. Yeah. So I make sure I, I have it, maybe have those once a year. It's too greasy for me. I don't like them, so I don't eat them. But I make sure that my body doesn't go into control and, and drive me to those things by eating enough carbohydrates, if that makes sense. I don't like falling asleep on my bicycle and crashing. I've done it before. I went so far without sleep, I fell off my bike. I was just like micro sleeping. So I make sure I get enough sleep that I don't crash my bike. I don't like being dehydrated, so I make sure I drink enough water. So if you don't like eating greasy stuff, get enough carbs. If you don't want the carbohydrate, rice, or whatever, have enough fruit. Don't make it this like mental addiction thing. It's not. It's just habits. You're not doing meth. Yeah, but sometimes you're eating you've rice. Got or whatever. enough fruit, and you still want the Addiction is just an excuse uh, I mean, for negative how do you mental attitude. That? You're just hungry. Hmm. How else would you make the difference between fruit and cooked, except the emotions, the fact that you, you used you're to hungry, eat so your body goes, "Give me that." Don't go out to eat hungry, and you won't eat anything that you don't want. Calories. And then you have to force it over time. You have to sort of force it with discipline, and then your body starts to crave those things. Yeah. Takes time. I've been doing this 13 years now, so my body's like. But if you just yo-yoing a bit, it's a lot harder. Yeah. But just remember, the mind is very powerful. Okay. Um, has really noticed a difference in her period since she started eating cooked food. She did a YouTube video on it. Yeah, she did a YouTube video about it. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. That's, that's did really notice any difference in her period when she started eating rice and that's stuff? So she did a video about it. Um, you're best watching that video because that's more objective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the, what is the latest time you eat before you're on your Eat at 3am if you have to. <laughs> but, next day, have early breakfast and start going to eat early. 
I never miss a meal anymore. Don't go to sleep hungry. Eat. But understand that you need to eat early, ideally. So have like a 95% rule. But if you have a backup plan as well, it's better to go to bed in a full stomach than not have to have a glycogen, in my opinion. Because then the next day, you like, want to eat stuff you don't normally want to eat, and you're not feeling the best. That's why I don't recommend juice diets or whatever, because people just binge out and they go afterwards. What time do you eat dinner? I'm going to straight dinner after this talk. So 5, 6 o'clock. Like every day, what time do you usually eat dinner? 5, 6 o'clock. Or 7 o'clock. Early is better. And then you can start getting up earlier, you're going to bed earlier. Go, you know, and then your, whole, your hormones are working better. Going to eat late, going to bed late, that's, that's the road to depression. Because the body goes, this is not working, man. We're going to give you signs of depression because you're on the wrong path. So early early dinners, big time. And that's why people go out with their friends. Most people's friends want to eat at 10 o'clock at night or whatever. So then they're going to eat at 10 o'clock at night and they don't feel good the next day. It's not so much the food, it's the time they ate it. It's just like if I go training at 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, I'm, I'm half asleep. So use the clock to help us. But eat earlier, it's better. Start the day, boom, boom, boom. Oh, yes. uh, some people uh, say to me, oh, I couldn't do the vegan thing because I love the bread. I just have bread. to eat the bread. Yeah, like, bread, most breads are vegan. Yeah, especially, yeah, I know. Well, but the, the high no, carb and... So you don't, you don't really promote bread. Like, it's not like fruit, it's not as good because it's dehydrated or dehydrating. I find bread is hard to digest. Yeah. Okay, so, but if you hydrate before. Yes, all right. But I, I can eat bread if I want. But I don't. I don't. Uh, I prefer the fruits or the um, potatoes, the corn. How about people who really sugar. love the bread? Especially in Germany, we have a lot of people. Yeah, good. The bread there is different because it's a lot black and it's more yeah. digest better than the white stuff in Australia. All right. Yeah, I don't eat white bread. Well, I do it when I have pizza. I don't. It doesn't make people fat, but it's a bit. You know, it's, okay. it's low water content. So yeah. it's a bit slow in digestion. So if someone's going to have bread, have more water. Yeah. Uh, I prefer, you know, I prefer, this is video, I can eat anything I want. But mm. I prefer other sources of carbohydrate to bread. Yeah. But I would eat bread if I had to. Yeah. If that's all it was, I'd eat it. Boom. Yeah. When I was in Germany, I was like, this black bread with this vegan onion spread, just like, yeah. big loaf. <laughs> loaf so heavy, you could smash a window with it. Mm. I was eating that. But my preference is, yeah, fruit or rice, potato. Yeah. Okay. And the sodium, Because I find bread's yeah. a bit dry. Yeah. Um, I think Freely said... Sorry. <laughs> Freely said she's not uh, liking it because of the highest, of the high sodium content. And it's got more salt in it. Yeah. So that, too much salt makes me thirsty. I don't mm. need that much salt. So I try and keep my diet lower sodium. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like so if you bake your own bread, obviously you... That's too much work for me. Yeah. Boy, lazy. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm looking for some yeah. suggestions for people who... Say that. I say I'll tell them to eat your bread if it's working for you. Keep eating it. Otherwise, if you don't like it, choose another carbohydrate source. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I prefer the other other sources. This is, I just love bread, but I prefer the other way. Mm. So I was thinking a pasta is actually a bit like bread because it's. It is. It's very yeah, dry. Yeah, but, but then it gets. Rehydrated cook by it. cooking. Oh. Same as rice, you know. Same yeah. also with the wraps. Yeah. Also yeah. white flour. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also like bread. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to have a burrito, that's bread. Yeah. But it's sort of like a very thin, and small water content. Yeah. But if, if we're going to have anything like that, I always make sure I drink water beforehand. Same with dried fruit. If I'm going to have a kilo bag of dried banana, I'll smash down a litre of water beforehand. So yeah. then the water's in your stomach, the food goes in, mm. mixes together. I find that works easier than having the food and then the water on top. Because mm. the, the food goes in there, absorbs the moisture in the dry stomach, and then it's a bit, you know. Mm. It's like riding your bike this way. You can do it, but it's just better if you go this way. You can have water after your meal, but it works better if you have it before. But either way, you can do it. You just be more efficient if you have it beforehand. How long before would you suggest? Because I, I did it shortly the last few days. No, one of the last few days. I did it shortly before the meal and then ten, I, five, five, I, I couldn't eat until I'm, I was full. Five, so ten was, minutes. Mm, yeah. Okay. So not Half directly before. Yeah, like I'm going to go yeah. in the restaurant now. Just have, well, I'll go to the restaurant and have a bottle of water first before mm. I eat. 
and I'll eat in a couple of minutes. So five, bit, five minutes to 30 minutes is fine. Do you think it's good to have a salad with your cooked stuff or for this mega difference? Raw veggies? Yeah. I like last night I had rice and salad. Yeah. Would you but make sure it together you don't, or before? Together, together. Mixing it in. Make sure you know that you don't fill up on salad. Because then you won't get enough carbohydrates. And you'll be like, where's the cheese? You know? So salad is excellent, but make sure you're having it with something that's carbohydrate. Either fruit, green smoothies, or uh, greens and rice. It's good. People have, oh, I'm just having salad, big salad. <laughs> then they're, they're, they're going to fat later on. <coughs> what about tomorrow's meal? Because uh, they said that there was like a buffet and there would yeah. be like salads and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, and how do we register? I just Oh, yeah, so 5.30, 6 o'clock, 200 baht, all we can eat. Vegan, mostly organic. Do you think a high calorie juice juice could be useful for healing stuff because you're not digesting? Is a high calorie juice thing a good idea for healing things? Well, yeah. Well, depends what people go back to afterwards. No, no. Because you can pretty much heal most things, but most people go back to the things that caused in the first place. You know? So you can heal heart disease or whatever, but if you go back to doing what caused the heart disease, it's coming back. So I, I, I would say, what's that? Again, same thing. My mum's got arthritis, and we she ate. I ate, fed her cooked vegan food for a few few days. Her arthritis. She was in a walker. She would have a walker at the supermarket. My obese mother in the walker, three days on a vegan diet. I was cooking for her in 2009. The walker stayed at home. She's like, oh, this must be the energy, you young kids. It's like, what's she eating, mum? But, as soon as we left, that night, out comes the cheese, out comes the tuna, and the arthritis comes back. I said, at least now, mum, you know you've got an option. So juice diets, waste of time, in my opinion. Because they're not sustainable. So you might get better results, but then they go back to what they're doing. So you have to have a plan what works. That's what everyone does. Joe Cross, he's... Yeah, you put the weight back on now, like the, the juice guy. Juice reboot me or what they call it, you know? It's, it's just fad because it's not sustainable. It's a bit like going... People have, high, people have a high stress job they hate to buy crap they